I've managed to remove this uh, the offending item, this mandrel that had gotten itself seized into uh, into my threaded hole there in the back of this uh, of this workpiece. Oh dear, what if actually? Hmm. I measured the hole, and it's an inch. Uh, an an inch minor diameter, 26 threads per inch, which happens to be a quarter equivalent of a quarter British Standard Fine thread. And so what I propose to do, I, I need to use these threads later as uh, you know an active component of the, um, an active feature of the component. So unless I only use like half the available threads up to the damage point, I could proceed various ways. I could kind of grind with a little kind of Dremel tool. I could grind those threads completely away just leaving a gap. I think that's very bad practice. What I propose to do is kind of chase the threads using this tap, which is a 20, 26 TPI uh, quarter BSF tap. And just sort of see if I can stroke that uh, that bit of damage thread back into, back into life, or at least um, bend the uh, the, the bent bit back back upright so that it, it, it doesn't uh, over overlay its neighbor as it is now. I'll just give them a bit of a scrub. Little toothbrushes always come in handy in the workshop. But I've just noticed now, uh, in playing with the camera in the, on camera a few moments ago, that the tail end of that mandrel that I've just turned away appears to be very close to wanting to fit this ball. I don't want to force it because there's a bit of damage. Ah. Right, I'm not going to go any further than that. But I may... Oh, I wonder if I can reuse this. I think it's going to be unlikely. I think it's going to be safer for me to rechuck this in the lathe and just turn a whole new section because, you know, to, to remount this with such precision Especially considering that I'm going to be working on the very objective end of the microscope, it would worry me that you know the precision there would not be would not be sufficient. Anyway, let me just kind of proceed with this on this tech for a moment. Let's clean out this crud. In fact, I might use a bit of solvent in there as well because there's so much cutting fluid and WD-40. I've got a bit of xylene here. Dissolve all the old oil quite effectively. Mm, I'm not going to do this. In fact, I'll use the old toothbrush for a start. I don't want to dip it into the pot of xylene. Alright, so this is where I start coming undone. Right, I'll use the cap. No, I won't. I'll use my little crucible. Much, much tidier. Right, I've got this little evaporating dish. Just use that as a receptacle. Okay, on. Let's just give it a scrub. You can see how much crud is coming out there. Anyway, I should not be using this piece of wood either. This is uh, a few hours later. And I'm just studying this uh, this workpiece now that I've managed to clear the bore. So I've managed to create a straight access to that bore, but I still need to crack the um, the Loctite seal between this nose piece and the body of the uh, of the microscope before I can proceed with the rest of the job. I'm very surprised that uh, I wasn't able to 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 get it out. Previously, I even tried to drive it out through that hole with a with a kind of wooden punch, rest and with the uh, with the body of the instrument resting on this face. Try to drive drive that seating out there while um, while the whole thing was really hot, but uh, to no avail. In any event, I've been I've been scrubbing this with a bit of uh, solvent here. I've got some xylene. Uh, old toothbrushes always come in very handy in the workshop to get rid of some of the grease and muck which I believe may have contributed to my problem. It's galling a bit inside there. I've got a watchmaker. 
is grey though. Uh, I think I need something with a very fine point. So I've got a, a watchmaker's graver here. Just see if I can just lightly run it along the thread just to pick up any. Actually lost that bit of damaged thread. I think it's broken off, which is kind of a good thing, really. Right. So I've got a 26 TPI um, quarter BSF tap here. That's a 26 TPI screw cut thread in a one-inch um, minor diameter bore. So I'm going to try and use this as a chaser and just by hand. Kind of this tap around a bit. Now, which way does it? Yeah, it's cutting in that direction. So, I just made a little. Marker of the pen. Let's we'll see how. Yeah. We're slowly going as far as those damaged threads. Hmm. And really, these threads are not a precision surface. The whole idea is that. Uh, it is the register between this face and that face which gives you the precision you require because a thread like this will never present ultimate precision because there's always a tiny amount of free play there I mean there's absolutely you know, very little free play but in an instrument of this type that represents a massive departure from, uh, from precision hmm. I'm going to give it further thought. Right, there are no shortcuts in this world, and I've decided that the best way to uh, fix this problem is to just do the damn thing properly and um, turn away the offending item, make a new one, make sure everything is absolutely true and concentric, and uh, that way I know the finished product will, uh, will work as expected. You know, making a precision tool maker's microscope, uh, I can't allow errors to creep in because I'm trying to save save time. Uh, so I've I've set this up in the um, in the four jaw again, and got it pretty much as close as I as, as I think I'll ever get it. And I know this face is concentric with the rest because they're all, you know, uh, diameters upon diameters. Uh, you know, this fitted very nice and smoothly in there when I when I when I when I joined the two together and it was all bored and turned on the outside diameter at the same setting. So effectively I'm using this as a measure of the the uh, truth of this body in the chuck. So if I revolve this you can just about see if I just refocus the camera. I've got a small parallax area on the camera. You can just see the slightest quiver of the needle. And bearing in mind that each division is two microns, which is less than a tenth of a thou. I think I've got a total indicator reading of about three microns there. So I'd buy that. So next job, poke a boring bar down there with very light cuts. As you can see the chuck is literally holding on uh, by the skin of its teeth. Uh, you can see no more than five or six millimeters being held in the uh, in the chuck jaws there. So I can't afford to put any pressure on this workpiece whatsoever or I'll throw it out of truth if not throw it out of the chuck. Uh, so on to the next next operation. Unfortunately that will have to be off camera because I can't get the camera set up suitably uh, around the lathe at this time. 
but I'll return, I'll revisit it on film when uh, when I'm done. Well, finally, I managed to remove this what was a very well made objective uh, lens holder, and this Loctite is absolutely incredible. I mean, it would not give way under any circumstances until I, I mean, I finally, I finally, uh, I, I bored and bored and bored, and I only took cuts, five thou cuts each time because I was worried about putting too much pressure on the job, throwing it out of the chuck. And I bored the whole thing away to that thickness. There was, there was a degree of wobble in the, in, in this body, so even I, even though I'd clocked the end of this to be very concentric with the lathe axis, the tail the tail end of the outboard end was uh, perhaps not seated absolutely squarely against the chuck jaws, or maybe the chuck jaws aren't as flat as I'd hoped. But in any event, there was a little bit of wobble there, so I realised that if I put the boring bar completely into the uh, bore of this uh, block, I would uh, I would put it out of truth. So I didn't want to touch this piece with the uh, with the cutting tool, and I managed to avoid doing that. And I I thinned this down sufficiently, and then I just put it in the vise and cracked the seal. But I, in in so doing, I also sh I sheared the metal. Uh, long before the, uh, the the glue gave way, and as you can see from the kind of greenish tint there, if I just bring the light down. I don't know if this uh, camera will pick up on that. Um, anyway, there's a greenish tint inside that ball, which is the colour of the Loctite. It hasn't suffered at all in the heat. You know, I, I had a I had a propane torch on that. Anyway, so finally I can. I can tackle, I can begin to tackle the rest of the job. So the next step really is to, well, after cleaning, I'll get rid of that piece. After cleaning this, which I think I'm going to have to use some acetone, uh, because it's, uh, it's a sign of type thing. Uh, you know, this uh, xylene is not going to do anything. And neither is this brass brush, if uh, my instincts serve me. And all that brown crud is just uh, chips and shavings and things that I've gotten. See, it does appear that there's a little ridge there, but I'm sure that's just a ridge of muck. Right, so off to the chemical current. Solvents. <coughs> right. I've got a big old uh, African hairdressing salon supply shop near where I live, and uh, well, I don't think the fact that it's uh, Afro hair particularly, but you know the fact that it's a, a beauty salon supplies. Um, I sell these great big tubs of acetone for. Two pounds or something. So um, I'll just decant some into my little pot, which I think is not going to be visible on the camera. So I'll just adjust the tripod. I'm using an iPhone 5, uh, and my tripod is, an, is, a, is a mini tripod, a real tripod, but I've got the iPhone clamped to it with some uh, kind of soft. Workshop clamps. So I'll just baptize that in there for a bit. And I don't think I'm going to have enough uh, film, if you like, or memory capacity to watch. Well, what's the opposite of watching paint dry? Watching, watching glue soften. So I won't, I won't make you watch the whole process of glue softening, or not in real time anyway. But I'd like to get rid of all this glue without actually affecting the metal if possible. 
I remember once on one of my very early projects uh, trying to clean some super glue off a piece, a piece of uh, silver steel uh, to which I uh, super glued some fixture or other and uh, I let it steep in acetone overnight and the next morning I got back and the whole thing was covered in rust. Little did I know uh, the effect the acetone would have stage. So that's all for tonight.